Hey, this is Chandra. Today, we are going to compare the total cost of ownership of cloud and on-premises infrastructure. And we are going to see which one is better. This is a topic that comes up frequently in the cloud practitioner exam. So, what do we mean by total cost of ownership? TCO is the purchase price plus the cost of operation over time. Now, TCO calculation is not straightforward in the on-premises setup as there are a lot of hidden costs. Whereas in the cloud, you get complete visibility. So we are going to compare the three-year cost of running a fleet of 25 servers and a 100 terabyte file share. As you all know, servers are needed to run applications. And a file share is used for a variety of things like storing documents, data files, and backups. I am hoping this exercise would give you some insight into the actual cost of operating your own data center. AWS used to have a TCO calculator, but they are now redirecting to the AWS pricing calculator. So I'm going to show you one of the older reports for the North Virginia region and we need to specify the configuration. Our servers are going to have four processors and four cores each. So number of processors is four, with four cores per processor, and the total number of servers is 25. And for memory, we are going to specify 32 GB of RAM. For storage type, we can use NAS, which stands for Network Attached Storage. They are used as a file share in an enterprise environment. And uh, specify 100 terabyte and calculate TCO. And here is a summary of a three year TCO. The calculator estimates that you could save 65% by moving to the cloud. And the total dollar savings is around $800,000 over a period of three years. The AWS cost also includes business level support. Right off the bat, we can see a considerable difference in the server ownership costs. The storage cost is also 30% less in the cloud. The on premises network cost is almost three times more. Interestingly, the IT labor cost is three times more for AWS. Now, why would labor cost more in the cloud? We probably need to look at the detailed calculation to see what's going on here. So to summarize, the three-year cost is 1.2 million for on-premises versus 420,000 for AWS. Now, it's possible that your on-premises setup may be super efficient and the cost may be a little different in your case. So please take this information as an example of what are the things to consider when estimating TCO. Now, let's see the calculations. We'll start with the server cost in AWS. The tool recommends 25 M4 2x large instances. Remember, this is an older report, so we have a better and newer generation instances now. Now, AWS provides a substantial discount in pricing if you commit to long-term usage. This commitment is called a reservation or savings plan. If you like to understand more about how AWS pricing works, do watch my AWS pricing tutorial. Purchasing reserved instances offer up to 72% discount over on-demand pricing. So the cost of running 25 servers is $105,000. The on-demand pricing is the standard pay-as-you-go pricing without any commitment. However, on-demand would cost two and a half times more. Since we are comparing the three-year TCO, the reserved instance pricing makes more sense. The AWS business support adds around 10%. So the total server cost for three years is $114,000. Now, in on-premises, we need to purchase servers with an upfront payment of about $260,000. And we also need to pay another $100,000 for a three-year maintenance contract. And you would also need to pay for the racks, power distribution units, network switches, 
and the maintenance contract for these items. So the total cost of server and rack infrastructure comes to around $493,000. On top of this, we also need to account for the facilities costs such as data center space, power, cooling, and all this add another $250,000. So you would end up spending $740,000 for on-premises versus $114,000 on AWS. Let's compare storage. The three-year on-premises storage cost is $328,000. In AWS, Elastic File Share along with business support comes to $232,000. Let's look at the network cost. This is often overlooked in the on-premises ownership cost. To support traffic generated by 25 servers and 100 terabyte of storage, we need to include networking equipment, maintenance, and bandwidth. And all this comes to around $131,000. Whereas in AWS, you're charged based on the data transfer. In most cases, AWS does not charge you for inbound data transfer. The calculator assumes a 10 terabyte outbound transfer every month. And the AWS outbound data transfer charges to the internet are nine cents per GB. So data transfer charges along with business support comes to $37,000 for three years. Let's now look at the labor cost. In the on-premises, the administrators are responsible for maintaining the physical infrastructure, operating system, and the virtualization software. So the three-year on-premises labor cost for managing 25 servers is $10,000. Whereas in the cloud, AWS takes care of the physical infrastructure and provides automation tools to manage your infrastructure. So your administrative workload is less in the cloud. And the estimated labor cost in the cloud is $2,500. The total business support cost is $34,000. It looks like both labor cost and support cost are shown together under IT labor in the report. When you account for the upfront purchase of assets, maintenance contract, facility, and operation, the on-premises cost can go through the roof. Calculating TCO in the on-premises data center is a challenging exercise as the cost is usually shared across different departments, and we don't get full visibility into the true cost. For example, the IT department may pay for the data center facility, servers, networking, and operations, and uh, purchases are usually piecemeal and uh, project-based. The IT department would then have to develop a formula to charge the business groups for services provided. In the cloud, the pricing is transparent and we need to pay monthly expenses based on usage. Interestingly, the finance team also needs to refine their process because in the cloud, you move away from capital intensive, long-term planning to an agile, consumption-based pricing. This is probably one reason why finance professionals are also encouraged to get certified as a cloud practitioner. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do like and subscribe to the channel. Please share your comments and feedback.